come on over, have a seat. Take off. Somebody could put that flag back up on one of the poles there for me, please. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Does that turtle, by any chance, have any relation to like Unami Lodge or no? Uh, possibly they took it for that because okay. Mr. Seaton was before them, of course, before yeah. Unami. But um, the the interpretation I've heard is the the earth, the the people of the earth are on the back of the turtle. Ah, I see. It's something like that. All right. So, is this the whole group? Where are you from? D.C. Oh, what? Where? Poland. Poland. U.S.? Austria. Austria, all right. Now, can everybody understand me pretty well? Yes. yes. All right, I, Briggs, of Am... Let's see, wait a minute. Okay, come on in, have a seat here. We got... All right, okay, go on ahead then. All right, you're going to miss out a great presentation. All right, I, Briggs, of Amarillo recognize you at the council. That's how they would have done it. Notice all the flags around here. They had people from Florida all the way to Canada along the East Coast coming to this camp. They even had two Frenchmen and two uh, Britons here. Okay, they had two meetings per day. The first meeting in the morning, they all met at the council. And the first one would have been just to plan the day Second one would have been a formal gathering, as we show in the actual picture from the camp right here. Now you notice Mr. Seaton is sitting sitting on a box, just like this one, and he's the program director. He was called Black Wolf. This is the Sagamore blanket representing him, and there's the wolf, and here are the coup feathers, and there is the turtle which represents the, all the peoples of the earth are on the turtle. Some, some tribes believe that. Okay, now notice again all the flags that represent where they came from. They were in about 10 or so teepees, eight or 10 per group. They didn't know each other. So they had to develop a system to communicate quickly. So whenever they worked together, introduced themselves at council, whatever, they did it like this. They said, I, then their last name, and then their town. So I said, I, Briggs of Amarillo, that'd be Texas, welcome you. All right, now Mr. Seton, I'm him. I, Seton of Coscob, that'd be Connecticut. Then he would say, you, say you had a question. You had stood up and with your hand up, and I say, recognize, and then you stand up, and then you say I, I, and your last name, Petrovsky, and of your city. From Warsaw. Of Warsaw. Of All Warsaw. right. And then you'd ask your question, and we'd have give or take, see? Okay. So that's how it worked every time. Now, they liked this system so much that apparently they did it throughout the whole camp. So whenever they worked together, worked, did anything, they always used that system. They made it into kind of a game. Fun and learning are the two most important things here at the camp, they said. Now, they had to have leaders for each teepee in each tent of about 10 people. So today, groups of eight or 10, what do you call those in your troop? Patrols. Patrols, what's the leader called? Patrol leader. Patrol leader. Is that any other names around the country, world, I mean? Well, in our language, <laughs> yes, what would it be? Um, we have patrol is Zastem and patrol leader is Zastem Okay, so everybody has different names. But here they had uniforms like this, no insignia, no, or none of that. Uh, so they had to come up with a system to know who the leader of each teepee was. So they called their leader a dog soldier, and he had a, he or she, it was actually he only in that camp, had a bandana. So who wants to be our dog soldier today? Let's break tradition. And why don't you stand up? What country? Poland, all right. Now here we have one of the new, uh, new women. 
Well, you may have, you obviously have it in your country anyway. We just in America just started with girls. In, yeah. All right, so now we're going to put this around. All right, is that in your eyes? There you are. Now, there is your dog soldier, your leader. Is she the best person for the job? Are you going to have any trouble with any of these guys? Alright, if you are, you better take this war club for better enforcement. Alright? So that's your war club. Okay, now the evening program what do you do at campfires today? Skits. Sing. Singing. What else? Skits. Skits. What else? Stories. Stories. Okay, how about dancing? Mr. Seaton would have had a sand painting right around here, and they would have danced through the sand. And then the next day, or after that, he would have made another sand painting for the next day. Also, they gave out awards. The Horns of the High Hiker, whatever group, teepee group, whatever, did the best for whatever day. Let, yesterday it was Florida. Let's say today it happens to be, you're from actually Bedford. You didn't realize that, did you? All right, so now he's from Bedford, and you won. All right, so that's the award. It would hang on their staff, just like patrol staff would in today's today's troops the favorite thing they had at at uh, council however were games 1910 games are a little different so we want you to experience that by going straight over there and play games before you do that make sure you click your little stylus thing or whatever it's called your novice thing and put your packs in the shade Go have fun. Play games. Thank you very much. Thank you. to get to Jamboree. And uh, he had a terrible layover, as you can imagine. The runner-up is uh, two countries are tied, England and Switzerland, with 50 hours. Okay, so why am I telling you this? So, basically, we are honestly privileged to be able to say we only traveled 50 or 60 hours to get to the United States. That's kind of crazy if you think about it, because back in the day in 1910, we would have to travel much longer on a steamship and then a train to get here to West Virginia. So that's exactly what scouts did back in the day in 1910. So, uh, for example, scouts coming from New York would get on a train and go to Lake George right here. From Lake George, they would travel on a steamship across the lake and end up in Silver Bay, the first American scout camp. So in Silver Bay, you can see right here, it was a lovely resort. They had tennis courts, they had swimming pools, they had fine dining, they had the full nine yards. Now, you're probably thinking, that is not a scout camp I have ever been to. I can't imagine those luxuries being at my scout camp. Well, that is because they didn't use any of them. They ended up hopping off the dock, going down this trail with a big fancy pack, and a big heavy pack, bypassing the resort entirely, ending up in the middle of the woods, and this is the cheery group of folks right there. So, why did they do this? They did this because it was an experiment. It was an experiment to see if scouting could be brought to the United States. So, in other words, it was the severest kind of test in the Boy Scouting movement given at this camp with American boys in an American environment. This was said by Mr. Edgar M. Robinson. 
this is Mr. Edgar M. Robinson right here. He was in charge of the YMCA at the time. Do we all know what the YMCA is? YMCA. Okay. Well, he was in charge of the YMCA at the time, the Young Men's Christian Association. He was also in charge of the Older Boys Association. Both of those organizations together had about 15,000 young men involved and over 400 camps in the United States alone. So, every year, they would have basically a big jamboree. So, uh, they would all come together and they would camp here at Silver Bay. And they, you can see they tended in these wall tents right here. They had full access to the resort. You can see these people had rocking chairs inside their tents. They had ties on, they had slack, they were clean shaven. They were not living the outdoor camping experience, right? So that's what Mr. Robinson wanted to introduce to his boys. He wanted to give them outdoor skills and craftsmanship and all that good stuff, as well as the character building and values he was trying to instill in these young men. So he approached a guy named Mr. Ernest Thompson Seaton, and a guy named Mr. Uh, Daniel Beard from the Sons of Daniel Boone. They taught him how to incorporate those outdoor activities into a youth organization. So from that, he approached a guy named Mr. Boyce. Now Mr. W.D. Boyce had lots of money. Whenever you're starting an organization, you need a guy with lots of money, right? So he had all the money, he also had all the information. So Mr. Boyce had gone to the UK a year previously, learned all about the scouting movement from Baden Powell himself, and he brought back all that information and tried to start his own scouting group in the US. However, it didn't really work, kind of went bankrupt, small problem, right? So he had to give up on the idea of there ever being scouting in the US. He resolved that it was impossible to have scouting in the United States of America. That is, until Mr. Robinson approached him. And he told Mr. Robinson, if you can make a two-week experimental camp work at your YMCA camp using the scouting principles, I will fund you for one year. I'll give you $1,000 a month, which is equivalent to about $30,000 a year uh, a month in today's money for a full year. And did it work? Obviously it worked because we're here today and we have pictures to prove it. So um, we, had the, we started the national headquarters in New York with the money donated by Mr. Boyce and they had a big uh, celebration and banquet to commemorate the starting of the Boy Scouts of America and they invited all the fancy politicians and important influential people of the day including Mr. Baden Powell himself. Mr. Baden Powell was introduced by Mr. Seaton and Mr. Seaton introduced him as the father of scouting. However, Baden Powell, humble man that he was, when he approached the podium, admonished Mr. Seaton and said, you have made a mistake, Mr. Seaton, and your remarks to the effect that I am the founder of this uh, idea of scouting for boys. I may say that you are the founder of it, but that Dan Beard is the father. In fact, there are many fathers. I might say that I'm merely one of the uncles. Now, why on earth? What Ben Powell, of all people, say, I'm merely one of the uncles of the scouting movement. Find out? You're going to have to go to station number two. There's a bit of a cliffhanger for you guys. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thanks.